Hi everyone, my name is Ethan. Welcome back to AI News. She is running for State Assembly uh, District 67. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Su Yu, and you can remember it this way. If you don't vote for me, I'm going to sue you. <laughs> so my name has a lot of O's. S-O-O-Y-O-O. -O -O. That's all you need to remember. S-Y-O-O. -O. Um, I was 80 years old when I immigrated to America, and I grew up in LA with majority Latinos. And I became a Christian, born again at age 13, and that just flipped my life. And since then, uh, my life was not the same. I dedicated my life to live for God and live to win lost souls to Christ. And I went to UC Irvine, graduated from Westminster, and um, we had ministry. We planted a church in Buena Park. And I supported my husband in the ministry as a pastor's wife for almost 25 years. And for 30 years, I had this business mm. of education, preparing students for college admission and SAT prep. So I worked with kids for about 35 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, teenagers. Oh, my God. Yes, I'm a teen specialist expert and oh. raised four of my own daughters. Wow, you must hate me when I was a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love uh, working with teenagers, uh, whether they're rebellious or super smart, uh, creative. I mean, God created each uh, individual with such creativity. Yeah. Everyone is unique and special. I'm very unique. In yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, when I was a teenager, I was very rebe rebellious uh -huh. uh, until I meet God. Yes. And I have a purpose in my yes, life and yes. I know what I'm doing. So yes, right. I think uh, God actually saved me for mm -hmm. from myself. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we need a mentor, mm -hmm. like someone that teach a uh, young individual, especially right. teenage people. Yes. So with you bringing your uh, religious yes. and uh, your faith yes. into education, I yes. think it's the most important thing. Yes. And that is why I'm running is because you know, the last three years, all the liberal policies from Sacramento about comprehensive sex education, that was bad, transgender bathroom. But now, gender identity. Yeah. Teaching our children as young as elementary school, as young as five-year-old, you're, what is your pronoun? Yeah. You're he, she, they. You can change your gender. After they, they uh, indoctrinate our kids for a few years, now they want to bring the hormone blocker. Yeah, and they want to, uh, they want the government to make the de decision on our me me on medical decision. School can make medical decision. I mean, kids can make medical decision mm -hmm. as young as twelve, and then they can have a trans um, operation. This is child abuse. It is child abuse. Th this is something that we as adult need to protect our our children, not just my child but our children, because this is a cultural war. Mm -hmm. This is cultural Marxism. And I didn't really know about all this uh, cultural Marxism, uh, all this conspiracy, um, you know, theories, uh, conspiracy theorists, all this uh, church, uh, you know, women of prayer. They talk about conspiracy theory about George Soros and, you know, vaccine having some kind of chips and that's just too much. Please don't say things like that. You, they're going to think you're crazy. But today, these conspiracy theories are conspiracy facts and it's hunting and it's uh, attacking our children. Yeah. This is why I'm running. Yeah. Because we have to fight. Yeah. Why do you think the devil is attacking gender specifically? Because mm -hmm. right now we can mm -hmm. see that gender is really under attack. I, I think from my opinion. Yeah. Once you can flip gender, yeah. you can flip anything. Yes. Because that is the only thing when mm -hmm. we go to the ground, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, 50 years later, they can say, oh, uh, he's about this age, yes. he's about uh, this height. Mm -hmm. But gender is the yeah. only thing that we can't change. We can't yeah. change. Yeah. And I think that is why they mm -hmm. want to flip it and they want to confuse us, yeah. our young people, so badly. So Satan is the father of lies. Yes. He come to deceive to kill and to steal. That is exactly what is happening today. And if you don't see this happening, I'm sorry. You're not hearing the, the word of the Holy Spirit because our children is under attack. 
they are sexualizing our children. Look at the culture. As soon as they open the phone, computer, they're bombarded with pornography already. And if you look at the Disney movie, Disney cartoons even, the producer made a commitment. I'm going to have trans theme in every pro production. Okay, so it's very intentional. And now the government is making laws so that the school teachers are mandated to teach this. Yeah. Okay, so once they're confused with their gender, these children will suffer for the rest of their life. You know, a few weeks ago, there was a protest um, in front of uh, Anaheim Convention because mm -hmm. there were 10,000 pediatricians conference and they were addressing how to make money off of our kids. That is sick. Hormone blocker. How to, you know, because it's all about the money. You know, this whole hormone blocker is a multi-billion dollar industry because mm. it's 100% paid with your tax dollars. Are you okay with that? If you go online, and research Chalk Hospital and Kaiser, they call this compassionate therapy. It is so deceitful. I spoke with a mom, she was in tears. Her child at Arcadia High School, when she was 16, she wants to have a hormone uh, trans change and start taking the hormone therapy. Mom said no. The school, between the school counselor and her daughter, they went to court and the judge signed yes, and she ultimately, at 17, had the hormone therapy and had the trans um, operation, and she ended up dying. Arcadia High School. Arcadia High School. And that's, this was a Latina mom. Latina mom. That's my high school. <laughs> and this, this happened like four or five years ago. She four said, five yeah, years she ago? said her daughter died. It's been three years. And her mom was in tears. And she's protesting because she wants to let the other moms know. She said the school lied to her, the counselors. She doesn't know what happened between the counselor and the child. That's mm -hmm. what they do. If a child is depressed and they're confused, then they have counselors talking to the child without parents knowing. And you can lose your kids. Yeah. You can lose your kids. Forever. Too. Yeah. She died. So, you know, bringing all this LGBT agenda to the schools is one thing. Yeah. So kids are going there. It's trendy. I'm gay. I'm less. Yeah. That's trendy. Yeah. Right now, that's not even an issue, folks. The issue is when your child wants to have medical procedure. Once you take the hormone blocker, your body change. What, what does a 15-year-old, 13-year-old, they go through this up and down, up and down. Yeah. That's normal. Let the kids be kids and leave the kids alone. Okay? Leave the kids alone. You cannot make money off of our kids because this is worse than murder. It is. Because once you have that cut off your private parts, boys cut off their private, it's not reversible. Yeah. But the doctors tell the patients it's reversible. There's a lot of documentaries out right now and the mom's in tears. And they're not even Christian. Mm -hmm. They're in tears. I wish the doctor would have stopped me yeah. and wait. Yeah. Can you wait until the kids are 18? Adult, they can make their own decision, you know? Yeah, and I think that's one of the problem is that in California or yes. in all these uh, liberal states, yeah. we focus so much on freedom and then we want, we, want to, we want our kids to make their own decision, but they are just kids and adult didn't guide them. Our government is actually helping the kids. Hey, you go make your decision. Yeah. You go, without adults guiding, they just gonna make stupid decisions. That's what kids do. That's and Th that's why you cannot drink. Yeah. Before twenty one. <laughs> that's why in hospital uh, in schools you need parents' signature, parents' permission to give Tylenol or other medicine. Mm -hmm. But you don't need parents' permission for hormone blocker. Yeah. What is the intention here? Parents, wake up. That's why I'm running. Yeah. I want to yell and tell the church. And tell the church leaders and parents, wake up. We need to protect our children. And it breaks my heart that we are so deceived, that we are not seeing what's happening to our precious children. And this is God's children, right? And if we read the Bible, we are living through the end times. It's Sodom and Gomorrah and the Babel Tower in the East Coast. New York. 
is the financial Babel Tower. Boston is the academic Babel Tower. San Jose and San Francisco is a tech Babel Tower. Mm -hmm. And Sodom and Gomorrah, Babel Tower combined times five is what we're living through. And who's vulnerable? Our children. But the prayer warriors, Asians, Chinese, and Korean, Asians, who are prayer warriors and even white people, they're in tears. They're in tears. They're crying out for the children. And they're crying out to the Lord for repentance. I mean, we are living through such end time. And look at the churches are so complacent. It is time for us to repent. And really, if we don't cry out now, we're going to lose a whole generation. And we are, this is a spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 11, it's not about flesh and blood. This is a spiritual warfare. And Satan comes like a snake mm -hmm. behind the door. And that's all the laws passed behind, behind the door. We don't even know. Young legislators like Evan Lowe, Alex Lee, all these young people who never had kids. And want to make they're decisions. They're making laws how to raise our own children. <laughs> yeah. If we don't rise up and vote, you are responsible because you didn't vote. And you are responsible because you voted the wrong way. You vote for the party. Tulsi Gabbard left the party. She was a Democrat candidate for president in 2020. Mm -hmm. She left the party and this is what she said. I cannot stay with the party that's dragging our nation into nuclear war. The people at the top, the elites can be in their white castle, their castle and their bunker. Bunker. How about the rest of Americans when the war happens? You know, just leaving us to die. And the school too, that's how I feel. Rich people can send their kids to top private school, whatever. How about the rest of the children? learning all this trash and toxic. This is crime. This mm -hmm. is crime that we need to stop together. Asians, Latinos, we're not minority. We're not. We make up over 62% in California. We are responsible for California sinking. This is a crime against our next generation. Mm -hmm. Our children cannot even afford to buy a house. They have to look for jobs outside the state. We have exodus. I, I, I can't even buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you graduate from top college and you have a career after you pay your debt. That's it. They don't have money. Come on. Is this where we immigrated to? This is because it's one party. We are fighting cultural Marxism. Folks, we need God back. Mm -hmm. My husband's a pastor. I have a degree in theology. Okay. Yeah. And I was a youth pastor. I just didn't get ordained. We don't need two ordained pastors in one household. <laughs> but this is a spiritual warfare. We need to heed. We are living through end times. God is looking for the final harvest. And I am running for the next generation to prepare them to be God's army. Lord's army, join me, please. I was reading through your... Uh... Yeah. I'll say resume your flyer. Mm. There's a, a very interesting story about you and your husband. How did you and your husband meet? Oh, we met in college. Okay. You know, I, after I became a Christian at 13 years old, mm. I was really filled with the Holy Spirit. And I was on a mission to evangelize. So in middle school, I was an evangelist. Mm. In high school, John Marshall High School, I was an evangelist. I was like a social worker. Everyone who immigrated, I shared the gospel. And then in college, same thing. I was like a minister, campus pastor. And that's how I met my husband. He was a president of the Korean Christian Fellowship. And uh, he, he, you know, he pursued me. But I said, no, I am not called for a relationship. I am like Paul. <laughs> I'm going on mission, overseas mission. That's it. So I didn't really date anybody. I had no interest in guys. And I thought, oh, God called me to be like Apostle Paul. But... You know, the Lord kind of opened my heart. And before he, he committed to go on a mission. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, this guy is serious about serving the Lord. Yes. So then I gave him a chance. And that's how we met and ended up 
uh, getting married. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Good chance that you gave him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he kind of talked me into marrying early uh, so that we can go to seminary together. Oh. So, yeah, I got married at 23. Oh, wow, that is very young. Yeah, and yeah. That, but that's actually and my normal. My age is, yeah. is yeah, average. Yeah. yeah. How does he feel about you running for the state assembly? You know what? He is so aware of what's going on. Mm. Yeah, 2016, you know, most of the Christians who pray awakened yeah. with what's going on. 2016 was the year that marked for all the Christians to wake up. Yes. Even American, even American, people who are not involved with politics, 2016 is when they woke up. What's happening with our nation? Right? And then the lies from the left news. So my husband is actually more aware of the issues than myself. Mm -hmm. And he understands that in times like this, we need Esther's and Daniel's and, and um, Moses to lead the people out. That was all politics. Yeah. That was all politics. So we cannot hide behind the church wall and let and leave, abandon our kids to perish. Yeah. So my husband, he campaigns for me every day. Every day he knocks on doors, he talks to the people. And the more he talks to the people, he's getting the message out, like me. Mm -hmm. All my volunteers, like 25 people come to my office every day. Even yesterday, I was at a Chinese church. I got kicked out. No politics. This lady kicked me out. And my heart was really broken. Older lady in her 70s, she came out. And we cried together in the parking lot. Because she told me that families are suffering. Mm -hmm. There's families with kids who's LGBT who's trans, and they're suffering alone. And we wept together in the church parking lot and we prayed. Wow. And not only that, not only our school mm -hmm. and our government yes. and then our basic life is mm -hmm. getting attacked. Yes. Even our churches are yeah. getting attacked. Yes. Uh, we just recently reported news. Yeah. A Methodist church, they have transgender pastor mm. in it. A Lutheran church, they oh. have transgender pastor in there. Is there anything that we can tell the church? What do you think as a pastor yourself? Well, not, not ordained, but uh, with the yeah, degree. Yes, of course. What do you think God is telling us to do? What, is, what do you think God is telling the churches to do? To see all these churches are just getting dismantled. Mm -hmm. And once we accept Jesus Christ, our heart and our life will change mm -hmm. into a brand new person. Mm -hmm. That, that, that is the verse that we all heard before. He used it mm -hmm. to support his new identity, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a transgender mm -hmm. person, a drag queen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that they, they call that, that is following... The, distortion. The yeah. Total distortion. You know, Bible clearly condemns all this practice. Homosexuals and gays and... We don't condemn them. Mm -hmm. I don't condemn them. We need to love them. Mm -hmm. But Bible tells us clearly how to live. And it doesn't matter what your party is. If you love Jesus Christ, He gave us the Bible. And Bible, Bible is the roadmap to heaven. This is how, how to live. And He clearly told us 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. That's all. And Psalm 139, I have created you from your womb. Just like you said, that you, when you found Jesus, you found the purpose of your life. Yeah. Every life is valuable. And he has a plan and a purpose for each person. But look what the culture is doing. The mm -hmm. cancer culture and the propaganda. It's like you have to think the same way. And even the pastors and the seminaries have been distorted and rationalized and justification. And you know, irony is, People who are most well-educated are the ones who accept the woke agenda. It, it, and they are, that's why I said, Boston, the academia. And we, we raise our children, we send them off to Ivy Leagues and Berkeley and L.A. They are the most uh, brainwashed. And it, I cried so much yeah. during the pandemic. My heart was so broken. What have we done? You know, and 
I'm like, wow, I never knew a day will come when I'm going to put my life on the line to defend constitution. <laughs> Basic freedom. All men are created equal. All men. And this is American constitution. Mm -hmm. We are all same beyond the colors. Doesn't matter. God loves us. Like the grandmas who didn't go to college, they have more common sense than some of these people who graduated from Ivy League. Too much education. That's Babel Tower. Too much education. They want to be God. Yes. That is idolatry. We have Creator God. God created biological male and biological female. That's it. Yeah. It's simple. But Satan distorts. You know how Satan uh, lied and deceived Eve? Mm -hmm. If you eat this apple, you're going to be like God. Babel yep. Tower, you are going to be like God. That is the deception and the sin. And that's why I said this is a spiritual warfare, because the radical left agenda is about attacking Jesus Christ. It's, a, it's about attacking everything that has to do with Christianity and church and God's people. We are persecuted. It is. In schools. They force anything that has to do with Christ out. But mm -hmm. now they're bringing in LGBT clubs, mm -hmm. even Satan club. Yeah. Okay. We are living through scary time. I would not run. I would not step up to run if it wasn't scary time like this. And I want to share a verse with you. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. This is what we are fighting. What grieved my heart and I cried so much. I wept during pandemic. I was in tears almost, you know, every day. And I don't know why I'm crying. Hmm. But you know what? I saw, God showed me, he gave me a holy burden that this darkness is being swallowed, right? Is it swallowing our next generation? And we who have found Christ, who have experienced Holy Spirit, we need to rise up. Please join me. Please join me in prayer and repentance. And let's seek for the power of the Holy Spirit together. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. 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 Wow. Everyone, go out and uh, say her name, walk the walk, and bring her message out. We need to wake up this generation. We have a generation to mm -hmm. save. We mm -hmm. have our kids to save. We have ourselves to save. Our salvation depends on what we do with our power to vote. And everyone has the abilities to yes. change, to make a change to our leftist agenda, the whole California right here. So everyone, please go out, walk the walk, tell people about her idea, spread this woman's message into your church that's what we need right now so thank you again thank for you. letting us be i need here. two things okay and i got so carried away okay i need two things of help one is vote if you can get 10 votes for me i'm gonna win this election i need to raise a hundred thousand dollars in the next two weeks to get the message out oh, wow. sending the mailer one mailer costs fifty thousand dollars yes so that's why campaign nobody wants to step up it's a really, I've been on a suicide mission, but it's tight is turning. The party is finally paying attention. This is a competitive race. They mm -hmm. just told me it's a toss up, which means it's very competitive. So if I win, I know it's giving God all the glory mm -hmm. because this is a miracle. Yeah. Right. So please help me. And ballot harvesting is legal. You just tell your friends, hey, bring all the ballots, vote together. You can sign and just turn it into the ballot box, not the post office. So please help me with votes and finance. Thank you so much.